Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, That means you're basically like a VIP member. And there's two different levels that you can, you know, subscribe to. And you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get... Or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get... Um, First dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows. So if you are far away and you couldn't make our last live show, it will be on the website. We're going to record this future live show. It's going to be on Patreon, but also bonus episodes each month. You guys tell us all the time you want more episodes. This is a way for you to get more episodes. So you're going to get our basic Tuesday Thursdays that we always put out, right? But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. I can't wait to talk about in detail some more stories because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. <laughs> they just unsubscribed. <laughs> they. This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. So if that is breaking some of your hearts, just go ahead and subscribe now. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. And this is your bloody, bloody happy hour. Hopefully this is your favorite true crime podcast. Absolutely. I think it should be. Yeah. It's my favorite. What we do in this podcast is we have a couple drinks. Mm -hmm. I got a mango chili. (sighs) Truly. I got a... uh, Ultra. uh, Real basic over there. Yeah. Actually, this is real basic too. Mm -hmm. And we're recording on an off day today because we're kind of off schedule. But we are happy to be here. And on this episode, we usually do our full... Story. So you hear one story from beginning to end, and we take turns telling the story. If you tune into our Tuesday episodes, those are our quickies. And we just talk about... Everybody loves a quickie. Yeah. yeah. We talk about quickie things. Quick things. Things are in the news. Um, we circle back sometimes. We circle back, and we pivot. We do all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have a story for us before I we did, started? Um, actually, uh, I did want to tell you all that... Mary Poppins showed up at my house last night and she flew my umbrella to streets down. <laughs> Did you I knock out some literally window? this this morning I where did I have to go? I went somewhere. As I'm driving home, where the hell did I go? Anyway, Not I'm driving church. home. I <laughs> nope. Mm-mm. And I was like, that umbrella looks familiar. I was like, how the hell did my umbrella? It's two, two streets, streets away. It was pretty windy. So and rainy. I or it was in my car last night when I dropped when I pulled into the driveway, went into the thing, it was in my car. Set before or after ambient. 
either I went on a walk with the umbrella and decided to leave it or Mary Poppins came. I'm going to go with Mary Poppins <laughs> because I did not know she was such a bitch and she just take my umbrella like that. Maybe somebody else needed it more. That's true. But they could have at least brought it back. They just ditched it. Well, they left it That's so that true. you can find it. And it was wide so open. It was borrowed. Like it was opened. I think it flew. I think you left it outside. It flew all the way two streets down? It had to fly over houses and over fences. <laughs> it was Mary Poppins. It was Mary Poppins. Yeah. So y'all, just want to let y'all know that she's, she's real. In town. And she is in town. And if you see her floating around, because it was real rainy. What did she say? Just a spoonful of sugar, sugar makes some medicine. medicine. Is she that said, Mary Poppins or is that Sound of Music? Medicine, go down. That's Mary Poppins. Okay. And you know, now that you think of it, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go. Like, what does that mean? Oh, you didn't take your medicine with sugar growing up? No. Oh, my mom had to do that for us. What? Like if it was a pill and like we we couldn't swallow it or if the pill had a bad taste, she'd crush it up in a spoon and then put it with sugar and get a little bit wet and you just took a spoon of the sugar and you didn't know you had your medicine in there. Oh my god! Sounds like a little drug, I know. drug activity. Every- I knew exactly what Mary Poppins was talking about. Oh, wow. That's why she was the best. <laughs> I love Mary Poppins. I actually, you know what? I'd call her a bitch, but I it, it was meant in like, the like a loving way. way. Yeah. yeah. Term like, of endearment. Yes. We do that a lot. Yeah. Also, there was another guy that set himself on fire. Yes. I mean, talk people, about that on the I know, because I just remembered it right now. This is what I love is, this is the world that we're in right now is somebody had beginning to end full video of it, video in it, perfect video. As he's yelling for help, but he did not try to do anything to help. He just wanted to make sure he was video. So he videoed, help, police, help. He He was? Um, I mean, I saw that, but was he actually yelling for help? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then the video. Did it show they, how he lit himself up, though? Like, did he pour the, I yeah, mean, Yeah, like, he, like, poured the accelerant. Poured it, and then, like, And then, like, lit, lit himself. Yeah. And it happened so quick. But listen, you think that maybe sanity will kick in when you're burning to death? Uh-uh. No, he was still totally freaking calm, on fire, just, like, standing there. And then he laid down to the ground, and he just kicked off his shoes. Oh, when did he start yelling help? He didn't. The damn camera guy <gasps> yelled help. <sighs> He was not yelling help. Got he it. did not even seem That's, like he was in distress. I the part that I saw was he was, they had already like blow torched him out or like uh-huh. whatever. And but he kept starting back up. <laughs> he kept it like it, he was I guess it was such an inferno he yeah. was. And so then it it like came back to fire and they had to blow him off again. Came back to fire twice. This is also what I saw. So people are standing around and then finally some guy it was like a and i don't know where they obviously is courthouse so some guy can't took off he did it in front of the courthouse where trump is yeah, having the trial yes yes i, yes, I don't yes, think it had anything to do with trump no. or that he just wanted to attention yeah and <clears throat> some some black guy he might have been a lawyer or maybe he was like a detective like but was not dressed up he took off like his trench coat and he was the first one over there. But then you see like at least six or seven police just kind of walking slowly over to the body. They were not trying to get burnt up. Uh-uh. They were not trying Mm-mm. to save a life Mm-mm. that day. They were just like. Well, they probably defunded. So they don't know. <laughs> they're like, well, we, this is just another day. Because they're like, we've been the subway. We've over here. We had to catch this one murder. We had to let this person out of jail. Like all the things. So this random guy had to go save him because. Well. But I was like, maybe he was like a chief. Maybe he was like a firefighter. Like maybe he had the heroism in him. And then other people. Like, I'm came. like, if you're, that's But the good, guy didn't good. die. He's critical. I think. I think he died. Okay. I've been hearing multiple contradictories. At first I thought he was crit- just critical. And you know, let me tell you what. I've also been, uh, I've found a new podcast. What is it? It's called Trailer Tales. Hmm. And it's real funny. <laughs> so if I start talking like real country, it's because I've been watching been Trailer Tales with Tammy and Crystal. <laughs> Tammy. 
And Tammy, Tammy is Tammy is a good looking bitch. Mm. All right, and she she's just a hot chick. You, you got to fi- she has to fight off all the guys. What? And she um, is, is it true crime? No, it is true comedy. That's exactly. <laughs> it is pure gold, is what it is. Love it. But anyways, trailer tales. I digress. Okay. Well, so I told you to, on Tuesday's episode we're going to Germany. Yeah. I, I want to shout out to the German. Jackie Espinoza, uh-huh. our sister Spanish podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was desperate for a story, and I didn't want to have to have you write another one. And she sent me. She translated her Spanish story into English oh, for me gosh. and sent me a story. And that way, she, so half of the work was done. I have to go in and like, yeah, do my own research and add, you know, stuff in there. So you guys have a story from Germany today. I love it for Jackie. So shout out Jackie. Shout out to Jackie. Have you ever heard of Peter Curtin? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> so and. She, she's actually the one that told me about Peter Curtin a long time ago. Peter when Curtin. I hear the name Peter Curtin, I think of one of my favorite movies, Copycat with Sigourney Weaver. And it was a great serial killer movie. Every true crime person needs to watch it. But um, Sigourney Weaver is a behavior analyst on the Ooh. movie. And she's tracking down a serial killer and it finds her... She, Serial killer finds her at one of her little conferences. She's basically like Catherine Ramslin. Oh. And one of her ki- serial killers becomes obsessed with her, tracks her down and attacks her. Oh, yeah. Then she becomes an agoraphobic. <laughs> so she's in. Now she's like helping these police officers f- catch a killer from her house. And this was in the 90s, and she's got a lot of technology yes. in the 90s. Yes. Well, the killer in this movie's <sighs> name is Peter Curtin, but he is a copycat killer. So I love it because every kill, he's copycatting a famous serial killer. Oh. So the layman detectives don't know that, like, oh, it's on. Okay. I when have they to show watch up it. to this crime scene, they don't know that everything is perfectly set up, like, what oh, um, Jeffrey Dahmer did yes. or what Boston Strangler did or whatever. So it's a good movie. Go watch it. The killer's name was Peter Curtin. I thought it was just a fake name. He's actually a real serial killer. Oh and one of the first gosh. ones ever. So let's learn about Peter Curtin. Peter Curtin. Oh. Um, and then we know we're going to, it's going to be a couple new vocabulary words. I love that. The first one is okay, so we know what kinks are, right? Oh yeah. We're um, all about kinks. Non-traditional sexual behaviors that people use to we, spice yes, up. Yes, kinks. I'm we don't like we're not a part of furries. We, we denounce the furries, but we are okay with kinks. Or yes. maybe I just denounce the furries. I don't even believe in any of it. Exactly. Um fetishes are a non-traditional sexual interest or behavior, but usually that has to be like necessary for arousal. So like you think about um Oh, like pee on you or something? Yeah, or oh, I was thinking of uh who was the big fat serial killer that I did that had to have the heels on? Put the oh, heels on the victims. Like his was yes. like shoes. His fetish was like his, shoes. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So um but both of those are not usually extremely violent. It's right. when it gets into paraphilia mm. is when it's abnormal sexual desires, but they involve extreme or dangerous activities. Oh, so maybe like, like maybe the choking. And, yeah, because um, I think they have to have like a code word when they're like, yes. uh, I'm about to die. But and, even, the, I mean, maybe that is more extreme. But um, So yeah. that's a paraphilia. Pa- then there's peakerism. Is it a paraphilia or paraphilia? What is it? Paraphilia is paraphilia. a condition. Got it. Then we're going to talk about peakerism. <laughs> and that if might you're, be my favorite. If you're Spanish, then you hear when you hear pica, like when that pica that yeah. pokes you. Okay. Okay. So that is a paraphilia or a rare disorder that involves the desire to penetrate someone's skin with sharp objects like knives, razors, or pins. And then 
you get sexual gratification from that. Okay. Like I'm going to poke you with this, with this like needle and that makes me what? Orgasm. I just, from poking <laughs> you with the needle. Yeah, or, a or a knife. Or a knife. Or razor or pen. Um, the sexual gratification comes from the setting, the shedding of blood. When they see the blood or the tearing of the flesh. Oh, so like or the pain and suffering. whenever I was torture. sleeping and I broom broke and I cut my finger open, a peekerism person would have been like, hell yes. But they needed to do that to you while they're screwing you. Oh, so like, okay. In we're order doing for it them to I'll, get off, they needed that. They need a little bit of blood. Yeah. They need a little bit of blood. They need to slice you up. Okay. I got it. I mean, and I'm then a, we I'm got a... hemo. <laughs> I don't know how to say this one. Hemotelagnia. Spell it. Spell it. H-E-M-O-T-O-L-A-G-N-I-A. Hemotelagnia. Okay. If that's pronounced like a g. That yeah. is the drinking or looking at blood. Oh, so vampire? Yes. Peter wow. Curtin is also known as the vampire of Dusseldorf. Oh, <laughs> is this uh, Harry Potter? What is happening? <laughs> Dusseldorf, isn't that like one of the things? Like a house or the house of all the... Hey, I, I listen, get laid, so I know nothing about Harry Potter. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know if it's Lord of the Rings. I don't know if it's Harry Potter. I don't know if it's Star Wars. I don't know about any of those shows. He's also known as the king of all perverts. So let's start from the beginning because we have to, because that kind of connects, especially with serial killers, it connects what they do later on. In life, right? Their childhood, yeah. what happens in childhood. But you know, you'll see in a minute that there's not a lot of red flags with Peter Curtin. Okay. I just or can't think about Peter Curtin because I keep thinking of Peter Cottontail. Like I, <laughs> I'm thinking about a bunny dude, but he probably probably is a furry. So he was born on May 26th, 1883, in Cologne, Germany. His mm. family was very, very, very keep drinking every time you hear a red flag. Okay. Every time his fam, oh, sorry, his family's very, very, very poor, and they lived in a small one-bedroom apartment. He was one of thirteen siblings. Oh, mm -mm. in a one-bedroom apartment. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Father was an alcoholic mm -mm. and had a violent and sadistic side. Drink and drink and drink. Uh, listen, if I had thirteen kids in one bedroom, I would also be an alcoholic uh, and and a violent and sadistic. And I would be violent <laughs> as well. So when he got drunk, he would often force his wife or one of the daughters to undress and have sex with him in front of all the other children. So, like I said, total normal childhood. Yeah, not like I mean, I'm flags. actually like. Waiting for the red flag. Yeah. Like, where is it? Can you wave it in my face? Because I don't see it. Since Peter was the oldest of the 13 siblings, he actually had to endure this the longest of everybody, right? Well. And often he would voluntarily absorb some of the uh, violence for his younger siblings. So, like, uh, don't go so after a little good guy. sissy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, take I'll me take instead. instead. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, so, I mean, he just I know, I know. protected him. He tried. So, <clears throat> you know, daily subjection to sexual violence and might have had a little influence on Peter. Might have, well, but we'll see. Um, such an influence that he, too, began having sex with one of his sisters. I mean. He just did what he saw. He thought it was normal. Like, he thought it was normal. What's really wrong with it? <laughs> We're just joking, y'all. This is your first episode where we're all a jail gang. So his <laughs> I mean, dad eventually are. went to jail for raping the daughter. But back then, you'll see that like they don't ever stay in jail very long. Because mm -mm. um, he nowadays, gets out yeah. basically the next day. Yeah. His parents eventually got a divorce. <laughs> um, right. At the age of eight, Peter drowned two puppies. Okay, um, now that's where we creek. draw the line. <laughs> in a creek? <laughs> Peter, you know what? I was fine with you banging and your sister. <laughs> but Don't you had to go puppies. drown the dogs. You, nuh-uh. <laughs> now that's a red flag. That's the first one I've seen. But he also um, drowned two of his friends while they were playing on a raft. So one oh, friend was on a raft. They fell in the water and they couldn't swim. And Peter just kind of looked. Other friend went after drowning friend to help them. 
And Peter just thought it was okay to move the raft over on top of both of their he heads. He just was playing a prank. He's a prankster. Until they stopped kicking. Well, I mean, they should have figured out how to get out from under the raft. I mean, it's not... Police thought it was a tragic accident. I mean, who it's, would think that yeah. the other little kid would drown both of them besides me? I mean, yeah. I think it was an accident. And I think they should have... Why are you on a raft hey. <laughs> in water if you don't know how to swim? Oh, no. Or a life vest. So... It's 18 eight. <laughs> there's no such thing as a life vest. Oh. Maybe there's no such thing as swim lessons. Maybe <laughs> nobody knew how to swim. I don't know. <laughs> During the time... I have a lot of questions. <laughs> this is already off the rails, and it's going to stay that way. So <laughs> just continue. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it it's, because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the the Cover Cover Podcast. Podcast. (laughs) We cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months, and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure, for <laughs> sure. You can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. During the time, this time, you know, Peter became friends with another, with an old, older man that lived in his apartment complex. Oh, here we go. And this man would, would be pretty positive for Peter. Okay. He was the local dog catcher, and he would catch, like, the local dogs in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and did. this man knew that Peter had, like, these weird sexual desires, so this man taught Peter how to masturbate. Oh, that's nice of him. Yeah, I mean... He's doing the skill of Lord's work. Yeah, learn. I mean, you got to lo- <laughs> So He's doing the Lord's work. He also taught him how to torture the dog. So now Peter's just not going to kill them. Now he knows how to kind of torture them. And this is when he kind of sees that he loves, like, when blood kind of comes Yeah, out of like, he likes to see the struggle. He likes to see the animal or the person struggle, for sure. He ran away from home a lot, a lot, like, for days and weeks at a time. And he would have these sexual desires. So when his sister wasn't around, he went to the dogs. Oh. Or to the sheep. uh, Or the pigs. Or the goats. At least he doesn't discriminate. I mean, you know. At least it's not a sister. I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at him. Peter's just trying to get it in. Literally. Literally. And he did. What animals? Every one of them. <laughs> Any animal. He's, he's equal opportunity opportunist. At age 13, he orgasmed and actually had his best orgasm. Oh, my. While he was choking a squirrel. So a squirrel bit him, which is, you know, Peter's a bad person when a squirrel bites you. Squirrels just don't bite you. I never even could get close enough to a squirrel for it to bite me because they're so fast. Well, this one bit him, and he grabbed it, and he choked it. And as he choked it, he okay. Let's be honest. In his pants. Let's be honest. How many times have you creamed in your pants from choking a squirrel? <laughs> it's happened twice for me. <laughs> so from then on, he was not able to enjoy sex with any in animal. Animals, oh, damn squirrel. Unless it involves some type of violence. I mean, fair. Yeah. So then he ramped up his bestiality <laughs> just a bit. And when now when he went to the farms or the fields to engage in these, you know, relationships with these animals, 
he would often gut their necks and cut, uh, like, chop the heads off mm -hmm. during the act. Yep. Stab the sheep so that he can hear the blood hit the ground as he's doing them. Oh, that's interesting. Or the goat or the goose. So he needed to stab them while he was yeah. engaging in the act. That was one of those words we just learned. Both of those words we just learned. So together. he's over here like all of them. masturbating he's while he's stabbing. So no, he's, he's like, screwing them while he's stabbing. Oh, good. Even better. Okay. He's yeah. in. So yeah. So he, he's yeah. screwing them and then he will go like he will gut the sheep and he will get he only gets off when that he hears the blood. Quite an interesting. And penetrates the, the knife penetrates. Yeah, that is quite. I was like, how have I not heard of this person? I don't know. <sighs> now nice. he eventually ran away for good um and by the age 15 what he would do is like he would sleep in the school for weeks at a time mm -hmm. or in vans and then he would just steal anything that he could to survive and by age 15 he went to the jail for the first of 27 times this first time was for theft like i said in germany they didn't keep people in jail for very long clearly Peter, Peter claimed that um, he committed his first murder in 1899, or he thought that he did, well, on when he got out of jail, the, when, after he was 15, he picked an 18-year-old girl at a bar, convinced her to go with him. Um, she said that, he said that they had sex and that he strangled her until she lost consciousness and he could only get off if he strangled her. Yeah. Then he ran away thinking he had killed her. But when he looked Ugh. in the news, like he, newspaper, yeah. like Nothing. he didn't see any reports, no reports of an attack or mm -mm. murder. He thought that was his first murder, but that um. did give him a little bit of like, Thirst. Yeah. Like he's like, I really like that. Like, let's keep going. Yes. I've graduated now from animals. Yeah. Humans. Forget the animals. He's done. He stopped. He did not Squirrel, really. get off on animals mm -mm. anymore. Mm -mm. In 1900, Peter was arrested for fraud and he was sentenced to four years in prison. And he was released in 1904. And as soon as he got out, he was drafted into the German army. Oh, this hell. is around World War I time. So. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's Nazi, germ, like all that era, right? I so probably. he was sent to France, mm. but he oui. abandoned. He was supposed to be sent to France, but he abandoned his duties. He was like went AWOL. He was like, I'm not, he not saw, about this life. So some good looking goats. No way he just at all. Got distracted. Um, and then that year he decided to. <laughs> oh no! They built like the serial killer list. Basically off of him because he decided to start setting fires. Okay, now. Meets all the criteria. Yeah. He would set fire to buildings and sit back and watch and masturbate because he imagined women, prostitutes, and they're burning alive. Got it. Yeah, um, it happens. It happens. That gave him a lot of pressure, pleasure for a lot of, for a, a while. Yeah, I can see. I can see that. I can see that. He was eventually arrested for um, going AWOL in the arm, like not uh, yep, going to yep, the war yep. like he was supposed to. And for arson, he ended up setting like 20 something fires, but he confessed to four of them. And then all these robberies. And then he went to prison from 1905 to 1913. But what he would do is he would cause violence in prison mm. in order to go to solitary confinement because oh. there he would just have quiet time and he would sit and he would daydream about Those. Um, how much he hated society, mm -hmm. but also about killing women and how he wanted to kill them and how he would torture oh. their bodies and their blood. Okay. And decapitating them and yeah. just all these things. And so he was sitting in solitary confinement, imagining and masturbating, imagining and masturbating. And if he wasn't already a sadist, he's really like conditioning himself to be I feel like, even more. Yeah. And do you think he like kept his like jizz, like in sort of like had like a jizz wall? Like a pile. Yeah. Like put on the wall. Wrote, yeah. Wrote things yeah, in his yeah, jizz. Yeah, 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 he probably did. Perhaps. <laughs> um, 
His first victim's name, first victim when he got out this time was Christine Klein. She was a 10 year old girl. So he's not oh, an ageist. He is either. literally all over the place. Older uh, girls, young girls, animals, mean, animals, farm animals, domesticated what, animals. Does, is there a line? I don't think so. Is there men? There's he, I think he kills one man, but I don't know that he sh- screws him. So he's not gay. Okay, so it's okay. So he has one line that he obviously okay. won't cross. Okay, got it. So, 10-year-old General. girl, he was going to rob this. So her family, it's like an inn. Mm-hmm. And I'm picturing like these old westerns where you walk into like a bar, but you can go and spend the night upstairs. It's like oh, a hotel yeah, upstairs, yeah, yeah. right? And the her family owned it, so she was going to rob this inn. He was going to rob this inn until he saw this ten year old girl sleeping in the bed, and he couldn't help himself. He couldn't. Her parents were downstairs working in the bar, so Peter um, choked mm. her until she was no longer moving while he was raping her, mm. and then he yep. positioned her so that her head was hanging off the bed Mm -hmm. while he slit her throat so that he can hear the blood spill out on the floor so that he could ejaculate. Okay. Yeah, that's... I mean, normal sexual night. It's an average day, you know? Just an average day. Now, after he did that, he was so satisfied, he wasn't worried about robbing the place anymore, so he just Mm -mm. left back out the window um and there was a suspect that was arrested for christine's murder and it was actually christine's uncle because christine and christine's parent christine's uncle and parents had gotten an argument and they were like maybe uncle jojo's Uh. was mad and went and killed christine he had to go through trial and everything so peter Loved watching like the trial and loved sitting. He stayed around that town. He loved like hearing the um how the town was so scared of something that of he course. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle was eventually cleared of the crime. Well, good. I mean, geez, poor it uncle. Been. I know. But you know, Peter occasionally would go back to Chris go to Christine's grave, found out where the grave was. And he would go and visit her, and he would play in the dirt, and that would cause him to orgasm. I'm going to say orgasm, I think, a whole, whole lot. I feel like this is where that salt grass show, when he- Ooh, maybe it got that from that. He was banging the dirt and the graveyard. Well, Peter Curtin was prob- probably that, was, too. It, he was probably Peter Curtin. Would you say salt grass? I don't know what it's called. Salt burn? Salt burn. Salt burn. Ew. Yes. Oh my gosh. So then that means people actually do that. Yeah, it's probably in the first. That's one the thing last. I have not. I mean, squirrel, oh. like, choke a squirrel, choke a squirrel, and get normal. off. Like, fine. Eh, graveyard. No. Eh. No, no. 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 We're gonna have to draw a line there. He enjoyed killing Christine so much that he found, two months later, he found a 17-year-old. Her name was Gertrude. It's crazy that I think he's going to kill, like, three Gertrudes. Um, She was asleep in her bed as well. Um, He did the same thing that he did to Christine, but he nearly beheaded Gertrude. Was was she at the inn as well? Or just randomly he just... No, this was just another house, another place. Yeah. Um, He entered, this was a home. Mm Mm-hmm. And then he was drafted into the army again because oh, okay. they really needed people to help in the war. They're like, we don't care if you start fires. Like, <laughs> yes. it's fine. We'll, Just, we'll have goats on sites. We will have a goat for you. Yes. Maybe a squirrel. But he, he abandoned his post again. And he was mm. jailed again. Released in 1921. He did eight years that time. Um, but this time when he was in prison... Jack the Ripper was out and about and terrorizing Uh. the country. And so he fantasized about what Jack the Ripper might have been doing and about how he wants to be the next Jack the Ripper. Yeah. So any of the times that he's gone to jail so far where any of it had to do with murder? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Robbery, arson, going AWOL. 
So like, are they okay? I know you don't know. I'm like, are they investigating these? Are they trying to figure out who did it? Maybe they're now blaming these murders on Jack the Ripper. Like, so now there's like just two right right now because it's the ten year old and the seventeen year old. Because remember the first one, yes. Um, wh- she came back didn't from die. her. Yeah, she yeah. Did, she was choked out, but then she was regained consciousness. Yeah, most likely, obviously. But these two are very similar in their. So they should think like, oh, well, yeah, well, or, yeah. And what he'll later say is that he uh, he's going to switch it up here in a little bit. He's trying to confuse police. Mm-hmm. And you got to remember, this is before like what a pattern is, what a profile is. This is before like I don't, really a serial prob- killer. Yeah, they probably don't even have the term yet. Yeah. Yeah. So um, on his release, he went to live in Attenberg. I don't know what that means, but he got married. He married a former sex worker named August. I love that for her. Wait. For them, because for them. Yeah, August like- was also a killer. She had just gotten out of jail for killing her fiance for cheating on him. You know, this on is, her. Th- there is somebody for, for everybody. everybody. So you know what? I'm not going to give up. And he spent the next four years living as a normal man. Oh, my God. August really changed him. They must have had the contract where they're like, okay, we can choke each other out, but like, let's have a code word so we don't <laughs> die, okay? Like, he later said that he had to imagine committing violence crimes while having sex with his wife in he, order to enjoy it. Yeah. He didn't really, because he didn't want to kill her. No. He really, like... He's probably not truly capable of love, but he adored probably as much as he can yeah. her. At this time, he also had a consistent job and consistent money. And so this is probably what we would call his um, break. Um, yeah, like a rest, not a resting phase, a cooling off period. Cooling off yeah, period. Yeah, cooling off period. I think that's what we call it. Um, yeah. So. Um, I mean, he had done so much. He had done so much. He needed. A, he needed to just I, take a break. I get, yeah, just let Jack the Ripper have have his moment. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, then he was like, Yeah, like this. I mean, it like, can only last for so long. He no. started getting four some years. Side I mean, pieces. that's a pretty good stint. The fuck is the word? I really think it's called like a cooling, cooling off. Cooling off period. Okay, it's just not satisfying me right now. I know. I get it. Um. So. He would have sex with other women. So every once in a while, he might have forced his wife. Like, he'd get too too mm. rough to his wife. Yep. Like, it started happening more and more. Then he started having sex with other women, but he's been really, really, really rough with them. Like, rape-like type. And two of his mistresses ended up accusing him of rape and seduction. Back then, adultery was very much a crime. It is literally the cooling off period. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, dang it. I know. Um, I'm sorry. So he did six months in jail, not for rape, but for do, seducing other women, even though he raped these women. Yeah. Like the rape charges got. Now he appealed this and one ended up not having to do any of the time. So. Oh, wow. He, yeah. He's a man's world. Mm. Now, after this, he was like, it's now my time because I'm, I, I can't be going back to jail. This is my time to shine. So. The beast is unleashed. Oh. And on February 3rd, 1929, Maria Kuhn was walking um, when Peter jumped over her and drug oh. her um, like by her coat into like a bush, told her, don't fight, don't scream. He stabbed her 24 times with a pair of scissors while he was having sex with her. Some of his those wounds were so deep that you could see the bone. So he's, but she survived. I get why he's do. I get it now. She survived. She survived. <sighs> yeah, that was a late reaction. <laughs> I know it took a while to. <laughs> well, I was going. I was like oh. in his former life, he was Edward Scissorhands. Maybe, but I think in his former life he was uh, probably an animal. That's why he was like so attracted to animals because that was part of his kingdom. And he is real animalistic with these so, so, so vicious. Yeah. Listen. But she's she was stabbed with scissors 27 times. 24 times. 24 times. She lived. She lived to tell about it. Five days later, she he died. strangled a <gasps> nine-year-old named Rosa. So oh, then there's Rosa. how old was Maria? I don't Ten. Know what I said. Well, wait, wait, it was a 10-year-old, 17-year-old. 
Then I don't know where Maria. I think Maria was grown. And then now we got a nine year old. He strangled her until she lost consciousness. Mm -hmm. Stabbed her thirteen times in the stomach, the heart, the head, the oh, genitals. She definitely died with scissors um, while raping um, and ejaculating. Um, he tried to hide her body under a covering, and then he returned hours later with kerosene and set her on fire. He wanted to make sure she died. Oh, he went all, like he... He took it all. He got all his, his, what's the one where you like fire? Arson? Oh, when you're... Pyro? Pyro oh, pyroglyphics? Pyromania. <laughs> Pyromania, his peakism, his, he, all, all of them. Autogonif... No, that's when you dress up and you get all, that's a different... You just want to say that word. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Five days later, he killed a 45-year-old mechanic male... For unknown reasons, he oh. said he just stabbed him 20 times in the head, in the back, in the eyes, um, and then returned to the scene of the crime to talk to the police about it. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah. Injected himself. In the you coma. know what? I think he might have killed Missy Beavers. He came back. Hmm. It is the, how many, eight-year anniversary? I think it's eight-year anniversary. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because it's April? Mm -hmm. Is it? Oh. April 18th. Shit. Um, even though these three murders were different in age and sex and everything, investigators finally concluded that they were probably committed by the same individual. Oh, so now okay. they're like, we got a madman on the loose. Clearly, with a really sturdy pair of scissors. Very good pair of scissors. I mean, um, but they didn't have any motive like robbery and they're used to crimes making sense robbery or something like that he's just back then a lot of people just didn't kill just to kill like there was yeah. no motive and remember serial killers don't have to have a motive okay so the german press was covering all these attacks pretty extensively oh, okay, and good. they discovered that um they thought that he might have been drinking the blood of his victims. Oh, we discussed this in a key term earlier in the episode. Mm -hmm. I've already forgotten it's the key term. It's an H word, hemo. Hemoglobin. Something. Hemoglo <laughs> so he's a hemoglobus. He's a hemo drinker. And um, that's when they coined him the vampire of Dusseldorf. Of Dusseldorf. Now. What a name. There was a mentally, I'm using their terms, mentally handicapped man that lived in Dusseldorf at this time. Okay. His last name was Strasburg, Strasburg, and he was arrested for like a little petty crime, and they were trying to find somebody for this crime. So they questioned him, and because he wasn't mentally there, he ended up confessing that he was the vampire of Dusseldorf. And he was thought locked he was. up in a mental institution. <laughs> And the police we were happy there. that they got the culprit of these horrific crimes. Oh, they the just The town were like, was happy. Was I mean, I think they had a vampire party. The, that did. sounds right. I think they did. I would have done the same. Made that up, but mm -hmm. it, they probably did. Yeah, I, I, I would have done it, yeah. Now, except for while the alleged killer was in the mental hospital, oh, uh, Peter Stranger Turns out there was another murder with scissors? Four other victims mm. randomly, but, but none of them died. Okay. Um, could they not identify him? Did they let the guy get out of the mental institution? He did eventually get out okay. because now August, while the guy's still in the men a, a mental institution, another girl was raped and strangled and stabbed. Um, and then her name was Maria Hahn. Um, Peter had actually met her and asked her out on a date to a meadow. I love Would a meadow. Would you like to go on a date? Nobody solves a problem like Maria to in a the meadow, meadow and it's, have a picnic. This is very sound of music. It is very red flagish. Let's go meet in a meadow and have a picnic. But that's what no, they do on Sound of Music. <laughs> and they were in Germany. <laughs> yes, it does sound very sound. And of music. I remember her singing to the children. With on with the picnic on basket the blanket. on the blanket in a meadow. Well, Peter did not bring a basket or a blanket. He just brought his, his scissors, weapons. and he Peter. killed her in the meadow. 
and sit there in and the watch wide her open she beautiful died. meadow. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Way to ruin the meadow. And he never it's buried like a his body for his bodies because he needed. <laughs> He never buried his bodies because he wanted the town to go crazy, but he was like, I got blood on me, and if there's a, a murder in the news, I don't want my wife to connect this blood and this murder. So he dug a hole, and he buried her, okay? And okay. he was like, I'll did just lo- go back and do something with her later. Why is he freaking out now? And that he did. He oh. went back. Um, he's. I was gonna ask about August to is dig that her his up. wife. Yeah, August is still around. Oh shit! Okay, still around. Okay, so we went back dig her up <laughs> to dig up Maria. Um, because he was gonna do something. He was going to pin her up on a tree like Jesus. Like he wanted to nail her hands to the tree oh, and yeah. her feet to the tree and make a mockery of her. But he said that her body was too heavy. So oh, instead, fat shaming. Instead. Um, and she's I'm trying dead. to remember his somatotype. Yeah, like he was just too floppy, like too dead weight. He ended up just letting her corpse lay on top of him for a while, while he just stroked her hair and stroked I her mean, body. I, listen, I get, I love a weighted <laughs> blanket, so I kind of get it. It helped his anxiety, and sometimes, like. If you're single, so like comfort. I'm single, and so sometimes it's nice, like just to get a hug. You like you feel like you're, you know, love. So I mean, I get it. Yeah. Like he's, yeah. but he had a wife, so I don't I'll know look, why. I'll lay on top of you here in a minute. <laughs> that is so sweet. Oh, y'all, I'm gonna lay on top of Caroline. Here I need that to happen, and I will stroke your hair. <laughs> oh my goodness! This is maybe my favorite episode ever. <laughs> I think we're getting a lot of it, listeners. It just, it's it never gonna like- end. <laughs> <laughs> stroked her and that made him feel better and then he just reburied her and kept her right there now um he decided that he wanted to send in a letter to the police station oh and hell now he's trying to be because he didn't get any glory off maria's body so he was like let me send a letter well he so should that have they had... know where to find maria's body so he did yeah he went and found maria's body he needed some glory he likes he likes the He needed to go he listen, he should have been working out this whole time so then he could lift <laughs> fat ass Maria oh. and put her up on the tree. <laughs> like Jesus. Oh man. In the meadow. At least it wasn't in, around Easter time. It was in August and oh, uh, and August is his wife. So I'm real confused with the dates and the <laughs> wife's name's August. I mean, this is a whole thing. He's doing too much. He's doing a lot. But he just cooled off for four years, so I mean I get it. Yeah, because it's still in August, and he sees two sisters, another Gertrude. There's like 45 Gertrudes, and then Louis Lindzen. One is five, one is 14. They're walking home from the fair, oh. and Peter bumps into them, and he tells older sister, Louis, can you go buy me some cigarettes right there at the store? I'll watch I'll watch Gertrude. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So Louis goes, leaves, goes to get some, some cigarettes, and when she comes back... Um, okay. she sees Gertrude has been strangled oh. and the throat has been slit. I have a th- okay, that's not good to see that ever. So she starts running, but Peter catches up with her, strangles her, and beheads her. That is very rude of him. And this is when he has the urge to drink the blood. So as he does, he I don't think he has a cup. I think he just drinks as it's pouring out of the body. Yeah, that's what you do. That's actually how it's done. So this is actually when he earns. So I don't know if he has been doing it before. I think he feels like he needs to live up to his vampire of Dusseldorf's name. So he decides to drink the blood. <sighs> he is just thirsty for blood. Literally. Yes. Um, the 27 year old Gertrude, he says, um, have sex with me. And she says, I'd rather die. And he goes, okay, okay we'll die then. Okay, we'll he die. stabbed her in the neck and the head and the shoulder and the back. And it's like random spots her. of stabbings. Like you just like. Well, it's just because that's what he gets off on is like the shit entering the body. Mm-hmm. Like the um, poke needle. The head, the, yes. 
Um, Albert Fish, I think, did this, but he would do it to himself. Like he would poke all these needles, like in his growing and on his. Albert Fish was, is another good yeah, one. Yeah, like do. that was just like therapy. Um, Isn't that like a needling? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. basically what he's doing. Okay, okay. except for when he, on his autopsy, hundreds of needles were found inside of him. Albert Fish. Oh, like he ate them? No, like he poked <laughs> them all the way in his skin. <laughs> Poked them all the way through. Owie! I yeah. can't even look. I don't like a paper cut. <laughs> um, oh, are we on Gertrude number three now? I think this is Gertrude number three. I but Gertrude was... li- uh, lives. After her head was severed? <laughs> Sorry. I think that Stabbed. was... Stabbed. Okay. Yes. That was number two, that her head was severed. I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now okay. this one... W- listen, we're getting back on track here. This one, she, this is after the one that said, I wanted to die. This is Gertrude, 27 year old Gertrude is the one that said, I'd rather die. I'd rather die. And he's like, okay, okay, well, yeah. Here we go. She ended up living. Um, She ended up living? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So his, he's leaving less and less time between his attacks. So he's losing control. He was already a random opportunist, right? He didn't have a certain type. Mm-mm. He didn't care what he age likes they the were. Young one. He likes them young, though. Or they're the ones that are the most, uh, like, that are available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, he's in his 40s, and I guess 27 is, you know, younger than 40. But he didn't... Aff- to me, it's a big. Either you like twenty-seven-year-olds, yeah, because like, like you did ten-year-olds, you five-year-olds, like and now you're confusing. He me just the likes yeah. the act of what he's doing to any flesh ever. Yeah, yeah. Now he decides to switch it up, and he's like, "Forget scissors, I'm gonna get hammers." And he finds Ida Ruder. He rapes her and beats beats her to death with a hammer. And Elizabeth um, was killed in the same way of Ida. And then there's two more people that were attacked with hammers, and they're, they survived. But because Peter changed his weapon, authorities separated these crimes oh. from his previous crimes. And so, is he drinking all their blood, too? You know, I mean, he has to be. And at what point does it become a cannibal? Because you know he's like, he's, he's on the. I mean, I think he falls under cannibalism. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he probably, yeah. He's just, his list is just so long. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he definitely was taking nibbles. There are a lot more attacks, but a lot of them ended up being non fatal. Um, and he received, hold on. Oh, police started this murder squad. And they received about 13,000 letters from people suggesting it was their neighbor, it was their husband that was a vampire, it was the weird man in the park that was a killer. But police were so desperate to find it that they followed any and every lead that came in. Oh. More than 9,000 people were questioned. Oh, my. The list of suspects had 900,000 names on it. Like, so they didn't just open up a letter and, like, throw it away. They, they at least added it to a list. They were DTF. They were definitely Poli- DTF. Police over, like that. No, they don't. They're that not is like not that these days. how they do it now. They just are like, mm But it's about to come to an end because Mary is about to save the day. It's May 1930, and Mary Bud Lick. <laughs> Bud Lick. <laughs> Is Mary arriving Butt Lick? In- Bud Lick. I can't. It's got to be Mary Bud Lick. <laughs> Just okay. arrived in town looking for a job. And she was supposed to meet a friend that I'm was going to show her where her it. hostel was. Oh, shoot. Yeah, open it. She's going to show her where her hostel was. Now, her friend didn't show up to the train station when she got there. And... She had never been in this town. She's supposed to go to this hostel, but she didn't know where it was. And this well-dressed, nice-looking man came to offer her and asked, "Where do you know where you're going?" And she says, yeah. "No, I'm trying to find hostel so and so." And she go, he goes, "Oh, it's this way. It's just right over here. I'll take you." Okay, so nice. So she goes with this man, and this man starts to grab on her and make a pass at her and she starts to scream Mm. and the man runs away oh 
Well, another man comes to her rescue. And this other man is Peter. Oh, Peter is the hero. And Peter says, oh, my goodness, you shouldn't be alone. The train station by yourself, where are you going? And she goes, I'm trying to go to this hostel. And he goes, oh, I bet you're hungry. Come to my place. My wife will cook you dinner. That's so, yes. August will cook you dinner. August will cook dinner. But August and wasn't there. you're going to be the dinner. <laughs> and you're going to be the dinner. Mm. Um, August wasn't there. Mm-mm. He ended up making a pass at Maria. And mm. Maria says, no, thanks. And Peter was like, you know what? You can leave if you're not going to loosen up. Yeah. So he says, you know what? I'll just walk you to your hostel. Okay. So he walks her through a forest. Oh. And in this forest Mm-mm. is where he rapes her and chokes her but does not stab her does not kill her he does say you don't remember where my house is do you and she goes no not at all no no uh-uh. and so he walks off so you know the point to where people say when serial killers are ready they're ready or they would ne- cause serial killers could they're so smart that they could never Right. If they wanted to, they could never be found. Jack yeah. the River, Ripper, yeah. never found. Who else was never found? Zodiac, Zodiac, never found. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of psychologists believe that they this, want to be found yeah. towards the end. And they want people to know who they are so they can have their ultimate fame. So BTK. people are like, was this his way of eventually being yeah, found? Yeah, because you don't just let the one go and you don't... You- yeah, and you don't just stop all your isms. Mm-mm. Because you never stop your isms. I, 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 you never stop your. Never stop your isms. I am at this. Yeah, you never stop your isms. Never stop your isms. Mm-mm. So she went back, and she didn't even tell the police about this. She ended up at her hostel. She didn't tell her police about this. The police about this, but she did write a letter to her friend, and she was telling the story of what happened, her rape to her friend but she put the address wrong on the envelope and the post the mail carrier didn't know where to deliver it to deliver the envelope because mm-hmm. the address was wrong so this nosy ass postal <clears throat> worker was dtf because <gasps> she just opened up the letter had to have been a woman i'm gonna I'm say it's a woman but probably back in those days it was a man opened up the the envelope and read the letter And when they read the letter, they were like, it must have been the vampire of Dusseldorf that has raped this woman. Let me take it to the popo. Oh, hell no. (laughs) So he took it to the police. Uh, And Chief Inspector Gannat, which is the one that that started Gannat, I know all these words, that started this murder squad. And this is Maria Budija, what's her name? This is Budnick. This is but, Mary Budnick's uh, Mary, rape. So the postal worker but, read about Mary Budnick's rape. Yep, yep, yep. And took it to the chief inspector. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of handling the vampire yep. case, yep. right? And um, so he contacts Maria because your address is on the envelope, right? At the hostel that she's staying at. Yeah. So he goes to see Maria and Maria was like, can you describe him? She's so confused because she's like, how did you even get this? Yeah. And Maria was like, because I didn't say this, but Peter, especially back then, was a good looking guy. We wouldn't think so now, I don't think, but he was well dressed. He was clean cut. He was clean cut. I've already looked him up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he looked like a trustworthy, good looking yeah. guy. Yeah. He's like Ted, but like, this is probably He's how the Ted, Ted Bun- the first yeah. Ted Bundy yeah. probably. Now Maria was like, um, I don't know his name, but I do know his penis where he size. Lives. Oh, <laughs> I do know where he lives. So she took the police to his apartment oh. and he was not there, but the apartment manager let them know the name of the guy that lived in the apartment they're trying to get into, and his name was Peter freaking Curtin. Peter PFK. S- Peter saw them and took off. <gasps> he knew oh. this was about to be the end. Yeah. But, you know, Peter's resourceful. And so he waits till they leave, and he goes back home, and he goes to see wifey August, because he's still with August. Yeah. And He's like, listen, babe. 
he says, I got got something to tell you. Remember this, those vows we took for better or for worse? This is the for worse. This is for and the for worse. you need to stick with me through this. And if you do, I'll make you rich because they have a $10,000 reward out. So why don't you go to the police and tell them that I confess to you. Tell them to meet me at this church because that's where we were going to go together and confess all my sins. Great plan. I love it. it you and know what? August is all about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's is a like, businesswoman. What? You yes. thought she was just a murderer. Sure will. She is a businesswoman. <laughs> she is all about it. She's like, I had to screw men my whole life for money. She's an ex prostitute. Yeah. Now I'm not going to have to. And $10,000 back then was, it was a like lot of money. It was like basically $4 million or billion. It's basically like $400 billion. <laughs> yeah. yeah I get it. So, um, all that happened. All that. They and go, they went to the church. And they went to the church. And he was there. And did she get her money? She got her money. I when Peter that. was arrested, he did not resist. He just had a smile on his face. He was a very like, proud smile. Yes. And let me tell you all my stories. Yeah, that's what he was ready. He, he was, was ready. like, I'm the vampire. Here's my, post my picture everywhere. Here's my scissors. I might suck your blood, but yeah. only if I can stab you 400 times <laughs> first. And don't show me a squirrel. Don't show me a squirrel. Peter confessed to psychologist Professor Carl Berg, <laughs> who later wrote a book called The Sadist about him. Mm. He confessed that he did drink the blood of his victims and that he felt pleasure when the blood spilled. He confessed that he did not rape all of his victims, but those that he did... He did to confuse the authorities. So he raped some, not others, to confuse the authorities. Same thing with switching from scissors to hammer. hammer. Like he was in the meadow with he Maria. He knew about it's like what a profile like, was before we knew, even knew what it was. He basically invented the game clue. I think it's like, he did. I killed Maria in the meadow with the scissors yeah. or is it like i killed you know somebody at the gertrude. end gertrude at the end with my hammer like <sighs> did it you're all over the place peter doc the, the psychologist determined that he was not insane and that he was competent to go to trial so then there is a trial on april 13th 1931 he was charged with only nine counts of murder um seven attempted murder now, the number that they have attached to him is nine, but they do think it's a whole lot more. Um, he tried to withdraw his confession by saying that he only confessed to get the money for his wife. That he was being a good husband. Yeah. But there's too much evidence too against much. him. Sorry about which, it. Um, mm -mm. He blamed his childhood. And he, fair. I know. And he blamed Germany's prison system because he spent all that time in solitary confinement. And he said all he had was to masturbate and be horny because that's the only thing that brought him pleasure in this little bitty room. Um, before he was executed, he wrote letters to the victim's family asking for forgiveness. And then one saying goodbye to his wife. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? You, you, you're like, you can't be mad. He later said oh, he did not yeah. feel guilty for any of the crimes. Well, they did not him. make him feel any type any, of way mm -mm, that mm -mm. he didn't only cared about how it was going to make him feel at that time. And that was good. Yeah. Um, he said that all his feelings were taken away as a child and therefore he did not have feelings anymore. I know I, it's true. I know it's true. Yeah. Um, he, yeah. oh, he was very aware that he was sadistic, but just thought it was hereditary because of what his dad did. Like he basically did what his dad did. So on July 2nd, 1932 at 6 a.m., Peter Curtin was executed by the guillotine. Oh, is Head it guillotine? Gu gu guillotine? Guillotine? What I seen? I don't guillotine. know. Guillotine. Kerosene? Guillotine. Guillotine. And guillotine. That you stick your head through that hole and then it, it chops, chops it. They okay. need to bring that shit back. 
for sure. He needed he to be poked with a bunch of needles before that. Maybe scissors. Yeah. His last words were to the pr- Professor Carl, um, asking him, after my head is cut off, do you think I'll still be able to hear the sound of my own blood spewing out, even for a moment? Because that would be the ultimate thrill and the pleasure of all pleasures. Yeah. To hear his own blood. Yeah. I for sure think he heard it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been, I was actually always wondered that. Mm-hmm. Are you still alive for a little bit? I feel after? like. I feel like you are. Yeah. She's still blinking. I mean, we know that you're still blinking. <clears throat> the lady. He probably is not even dead. Now, his head was split into two. And mummified, and his brain was removed to be observed and studied for studied for forensic analysis in order to explain his actions. Oh, they found no abnormalities (laughs) at all. (laughs) And when the war was over, they brought his head. Wow. To the United States, and oh. you can go to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Wisconsin and see his split open head. This is why ding, there's ding, so ding. much shit in Wisconsin, <laughs> why they are all a hot mess. Oh, my god! That's gosh. my next museum I need to go to. Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, his split open head. I'm going to Google his split open head. Now, here's my question. Do you think he was born to kill or conditioned to kill? I don't I would say conditioned I think he his environment was real fucked up when he was little so bad I mean you all you have is anger but I don't know why he he just but but why did he have to drown the dogs it's just where it starts little innocent available yeah control and then i think it just yeah grew so i don't think it was born with it it was just like he had seen so much shit he hated everything every yeah they were saying that his dad came from a long life of like alcoholism and like sadist type people and so that it was basically like a family pattern so that he was probably at least going to be what his dad was but what made him go like over the edge? I don't know. I don't know. This is the quietest I've ever been. <laughs> Anyways, there's Peter Curtin. Wow. Done, done, and done. All I've been looking forward to this whole entire episode, actually, not really halfway through, was that when April lays on me. <laughs> I'm about to lay <laughs> on Caroline. Yes. It's what I've wanted. Oh my gosh. And I'm gonna I'm going to rub your hair. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Rub yeah. What rub a great corpse. episode. I Ooh. love the story. Peter Curtin. Yes. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Like, who even knew? I know. And How, she, we've been sleep on Peter Curtin this whole time. And she did this whole episode in Spanish. Spanish. Yes. Como se llama? <laughs> I don't know. And I I finally like have tuned into some podcasts this week, and I already have my next two stories mm. on deck. Oh Jackie gosh. also sent me some other ones. Um, but I found and one of them, okay. I don't know what you're going to do next week, but another one is going to be a lot lighter than this. I mean, this was pretty great. (laughs) This was pretty great. It's going to be great. Actually, guys, we want to tell you this is our last episode. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. That was a great story. I loved it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. We will see y'all next time. Send this episode or a previous episode to a friend and tell them to start tuning in to Bloody Happy Hour. Be part of the Bloody Gang. And we'll see y'all next time on a whole new episode. Don't forget to stay aware. Wait. Stay aware. Stay alive. It's only been three years. Always (laughs) be DTF. Bye, y'all. Bye. But she's going (laughs) to lay on me real quick. So if you're still watching.
This has been a Rogue Media Network production.